and welcome everyone to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Serratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Serratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. And today we have a guest with us again. This is the second time we've had her on. Her name is Sarah Ellingworth. She is the lead accelerator um, on Bonnie's team, and she will be teaching two programs starting in February. So she's going to be teaching the foundations training, which if you don't know, is actually how you can learn what Bonnie does. So if you want to learn what Bonnie does, you have to take foundations to get all those pieces. And Sarah is going to be one of the instructors. She's going to be teaching the Australian time zone for that class. And she's also going to be teaching in February as well. It starts is Intuitive You, which I took last time, and I could tell you this is really incredible. And before I actually get into that, I do want people to know that there is a free gift uh, for your to help you develop your intuition if you sign up for the email. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. And I think there's also going to be like a webinar you're doing for foundations, right? So I'll leave a link for that as well. It's a free webinar. And um, there's a lot of great things that are going on. In this year, 2024, uh, really exciting things for spiritual acceleration. For it. so, thank you all for uh, joining us on this journey. So, um, it's I guess since Sarah's here with us, this is a, a special, you know, two shamans and a muggle edition again of consciousness and leash. It's really, really fun. Uh, so, we're going to be talking about past lives, and Bonnie and I did a four-part series on past lives last year. So that one was very in-depth and I'll leave links in the description. But today I wanted to do something a little bit more fun. Of course, it's just, it's gonna be educational as well. But uh, since, we, since Bonnie and I went in so deep last year and that was more of an educational piece, this one I think is gonna be a lot more fun to just explore. Uh, maybe our, we'll tune into like our personal past lives and, and see how that's affecting us in our current life. And, and then how you also could get, gain these abilities to view your past lives and actually do work within them with foundations, for example, is how you would be able to do that. So anyway, we don't, we actually don't have a plan other than that <laughs> for today. Okay. We're going to so do what I do. do. We're going to wing it. Well, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> All righty then. Cool. So um, Sarah, do you want to say anything since you this is your second time on the show and people may not know you? And do you want to talk about your past lives and kind of give us a little bit about sure. uh, what was maybe something that um, you want to share with us? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having me. And um, past lives is fascinating. I, I love the topic of past lives. I think the first thing that comes to mind for me, and I think I've shared this in a couple of um, podcasts that I've done with Chris when we've been talking about past lives, I have a memory as a child and I probably, I wouldn't have even been five, I, was, I would have been younger than five when I had this repetitive dream of being shot in the back. <laughs> oh. And I would wake up in the middle of the night, like I could feel it, I, would, I was reliving that experience and um, I was running through what looks like um, it's like you know the storage sheds like you've just got rows and rows of doors it was like that and I was running down outside and some guy shot me in the back <laughs> and I would have that repeatedly as a child and I didn't understand I had no idea what it was at the time, but now I know I was processing past life, like an, an experience of past life trauma. Um, but what I've also, like what I love about past life is that everything we've experienced, even in this lifetime, this is like we've brought it in again to work on on another level. Like nothing is new. We've all done this before. So, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I would love to hear I know we don't have live callers for, um, for today, but hearing about people's recollections or experiences or pieces, like little bits and pieces of what fragments of memories that they have from past lives and building on that. It's almost like a, a choose your own adventure, but you can um, unravel or understand the more you look into it, the more you explore um, all of the hidden pieces that we've experienced um, all of the interactions that we've had that has created this really colourful tapestry 
that we then bring into this lifetime to continue working on in a deeper way. Um, not that I would advocate <laughs> let's go and get shot in the back again. <laughs> but, um, yeah, cool. I, I mean, I find it fascinating, fascinating. So that, you guys, that reminds me of something, okay, because when you said you got shot in the back. So when I was... Let me think my daughter had to have been 18, but I started experiencing knowing or believing, feeling that same kind of experience of being shot in the back. But it was when I would be driving every time I got in my vehicle, uh, I would have this feeling like someone's going to shoot me in the back. OK, but the thing is, you guys, is it wasn't a past life. It was a discarnate. So I'm bringing this to the table simply because sometimes we think we're having a past life memory and it's a discarnate. So once mm -hmm. we took that discarnate out, that was over. And I, it was an intense feeling. Like every time I got in my car, man, my whole being was just like, I literally be looking like, is someone going to shoot me? Because I'm thinking this is what happened to me in a past life, but it wasn't a past life. Okay. And I know that people sometimes get confused thinking they're remembering a past life when it's actually a discarnate, you take that discarnate out and it's gone. Okay. I've I, thousands, I can do, I can tell thousands and thousands of stories. Okay. But the past life thing is anchored in us in a different way. Okay. So sometimes if we're looking at something and asking, is this a past life or is this a discarnate? Okay. So the discarnate thing has more of a, um, a lighter kind of like it's not anchored in it's not like feeling like a part of us if that makes sense there you know but you'll learn this kind of stuff in the training in the foundations and you know, so i don't want to go too much into that because we are dealing with past lives but i just want people to have that awareness that we you know we can be full thinking we're having a past life memory and we're not it's a discarnate. Right. And in foundations, there's a module on entity clearing. So you'll kind of tune into that aspect of it. And then there's another module on past life. So you'll be able to get those Correct. two isolated experiences and you'll be able to tell more clearly. Right. Um, Sarah, mm -hmm. I do have a question. So um, was that related to like a specific trauma in your current life like that? Did you he heal that? No, it was totally random. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like as in... <laughs> It was the same dream over and over again, um, and the, and the shot going in my back would wake me up. Like I, I would feel it. I would like I would feel it going into my back, and that would wake me up mm -hmm. as a child. Um, I don't know how. I I mean I had it. I had it repeatedly. Oh, I don't know. It was a few times in my childhood, so it wasn't like I had it every night. But it was. Um, yeah, just remember running. Mm -hmm. I remember someone running after me and then the shot would wake me up. And mm -hmm. I and I, there was no fear around it. I was just, I didn't really understand. It was just like having a memory. Right. It was like. Yeah, yeah. I'm remembering one of my uh, one of my clients, this is quite a while, while ago, but it just, it's just popping in. But sometimes we have, uh, like, for example, this woman always felt like she was suffocating, like she was, she couldn't breathe. Um, different scenarios would, would amp it up. So we went in and it was a past life and she was, um, there was like a, a big rock that they had put on her. You know what I mean? They, there was a, peoples that were intentionally killing her uh, slowly by suffocating her. So that past life got anchored in to her subconscious. This is, I just want to share a few things about how things get anchored in. So when we have a big trauma like that, so she's you know, she's being murdered or killed. Okay. She got whatever happened. It's a, it's a group of people. So clearly she was being punished or something. And so they, they started piling rocks on her until she got <laughs> crushed. But how, I, how the energy of past lives get anchored in is there's an emotion with it. Like for example, here she is, she doesn't die instantly. She's, you know, she's, she's knowing these people are, you know, punishing her and, and then each time they add something, it's just like she can't breathe more. She knows she's going to die. There's all this emotion in there. And she doesn't go th like, you know, in order to release something, we go through it. So what happens is, is we don't go through the actual emotion that we're experiencing. What I mean by going through, that means we surrender to it. 
we know it through direct experience of uh, all the emotions we're feeling. We're not in a thought. We're not telling a story. We're actually truly surrendered to what this experience feels like emotionally, okay, on all levels. When we don't do that and we have a big emotion, it gets anchored into what I call the soul imprint, and then we're going to carry it forth. We may not be acting it out, but that trauma for her, once I lifted and cleared out the energy of that past life, she no longer felt like she couldn't breathe, okay? So that's that's one scenario that can be happening. There's a lot of stuff that happens in the body where we've had past lives, injuries, blows, and it became emotional, and then we get anchored in, and then these become weak spots in the body, or we have pains that no doctor can find a reason for, you know, so we and we have injuries or whatever, so weak, weak areas, but pain, and then those, those all get cleared up immediately by clearing the, the trauma of the past life, okay? So there's lots of different things that get carried over. That's one of the things that does get carried over is any kinds of body injuries, body pain, body suffering, you'll carry it over. And sometimes you'll recreate the same kind of thing, but sometimes it's just something in your body that you, you know, there's no end to it. You might go to doctors. I had people, I've had a couple people coming in, go, one person going in for knee surgery. It was a, a past life injury, clean it up. She got off the table. She didn't need surgery. Okay. That's very common. So there's that kind of energy, but then there's also the th stuff that where we're where we have experiences, it gets anchored in emotionally, and then we don't didn't go through it. So now we're going to recreate it, which is what we've all been doing. This is that thing where we're talking about. We keep recreating recreating it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay, we've all been doing that. What you're experiencing right now, you got all this carryover. Okay, so, you know, we want to start cleaning that up because we're new paradigms happen and we can't be carrying this old garbage. We got to end it. So what, it, what about like carry over good stuff too, right? I mean, we carry over a lot of good experiences and memories and, sure. and talents and abilities. And so I know your experience of you, you've told me that you've had many, many past lives of being a healer at a high level. I'm yeah. assuming Sarah has probably been as well, has many past lives of being like a high level healer yeah. as well. What, is that... Some of the things that we're all doing, whatever we are doing in our lives, that's been a theme in our soul's evolution. Okay. So whatever, if someone's some, a great pianist or whatever, great glass blower, or it doesn't matter. There's an expertise that they, that they have within and that's, so gets anchored in too. So I've been mostly a muggle in all my past life. <laughs> Is that right, Sarah? Can you tune into that? <laughs> You're an investor, girl. You big man. You the man. Yeah, girl. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Muggle, yeah. Have we had a roles reversed? Like maybe in a past life, I was Bonnie's teacher or something. Maybe she was a muggle. Is I think those things happen too. Mm. <laughs> Bonnie's like, no. No. <laughs> what? So I've never been your teacher, Bonnie, in anything. <laughs> not, not in that. Not as a healer. I mean, we've had past lives for sure, but it's not been that kind. Of, I mean, we all learn from each other, you guys. Okay, everyone in some way is a teacher to us. We're a teacher to every on some level. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we've had exchange. Yeah, we've definitely had past lives for sure, Cynthia. Absolutely. But was Cynthia like a healer for me? I get a no on that. So, okay. And we had experiences, you know. Did she traumatize me? Yes. <laughs> what? No, I don't believe that one. <laughs> no, we've had good. We've had pretty good, good uh, lives together. It's it's good. I could sense that because I think you know right now in this lifetime, for the most part, I've been had good experience with you, Bonnie. Yeah. So yeah. it feels pretty clean. It does. <laughs> Sarah, clean. what about you? Yeah. <laughs> Have you always been my teacher too, Sarah? You're funny. Um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I feel like for everybody that we meet, <clears throat> I don't know if there's anyone, like it's the amount of times that we've incarnated and we've incarnated a lot. <laughs> and the soul, the oh, makeup wow. of the soul, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the aspects of the souls that come through. It's like, have you ever, is there, is there anybody new? 
Maybe. Have we not all brushed up against each other at some point in various yeah, lifetimes? No, like, yeah, there, I mean, we might might need some souls out of our soul family, which a lot of people are. <clears throat> but we, you guys, think we've been around a long friggin' time. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's okay. like, and yeah. not, uh, you know, not, and think about it. It isn't just in human bodies. We've been amoebas. We've been critters. We've been in, we've been all kinds of things. Okay. But we do have our soul family. So we've been around a long time and we've crossed paths many times, many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think there's a nice, there's a really nice affiliation even with the whole SA team. So I'm like, that's we've cool. absolutely all done this before together yeah. and yeah it's very, it's cool. it's very cool feel it straight away yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's soul recognition you guys damn yes, yes. yes. You no know, and i did talk to sarah because i had a major soul recognition on my drive to california from georgia <laughs> so i'm just going to share a little bit with that because it, it is a soul recognition because we do have past lives i'm a, um I'm going to back up a little bit. So my vehicle, you know, I, I know how to take care of my vehicles, you guys, but I oil changes, whatever, but somehow getting a tune up, somehow it just didn't anchor in, you know, it was like, I had a thought, I can't remember way back. And I had a thought if I need to, I think I need to, what about a tune up? And somehow my mind goes, my vehicle doesn't need a tune up. I don't know what I was thinking, but I now see that I was meant to have this experience. Okay. So I take off. I'm I leave. I, I stayed overnight in Amarillo, Texas, and then I'm driving into New Mexico, and then my car starts acting friggin' weird. And I'm thinking, oh great, really? And it's a Sunday, so a lot you know, there's no service stations, and so I stop at truck stop areas, like asking the you know mechanic anything. So then I finally got to this one area, and I got this one guy, and I called him, and he was open on a Sunday, and I could feel it. In my body, I mean, I knew this guy. Do you know what I'm saying? I never met him in my in this life, but I knew him. And so I go there and and uh, we talk and he puts my car in a thing. And, you know, I needed my my spark plugs were literally burnt. OK, but I also know I was meant to meet him. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. So so immediate. So both of us, both of us knew without a doubt we knew each other. OK. So there's this whole soul connection happening. Don't know what it is. Don't know what it means. I even got a, you know, Sarah gave me some info because I'm like, what is this about? What is this? You know, like what, you know, what? So because <laughs> the, the you guys, the, the draw is so freaking strong. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like that, des- that desire drawing us together is like a magnet. It's crazy stuff. So anyway, um, but that's the soul, you know what I'm saying? A soul recognition. I've been at airports and I sat down next to somebody and all of a sudden there's a soul recognition. I was in Bay Area one time getting nails, toenail, what do you call it, pedicure something, soul recognition. I actually stayed in contact with a couple of these people for years, but it was a soul recognition. We weren't doing anything in this particular lifetime, but their soul and my soul absolutely knew each other. And, you know, we... Sometimes you cross paths and you know it, and then you just move on. You're not going to do any soul dancing with them in this lifetime, okay? But, you know, we can feel these soul recognitions, and it's very, it's like a, a very strong pull. It has that same quality. You all know this. You meet somebody and you feel like you know them. Even though you don't know who them in the body, you know them. That's because you got a soul connection from past life. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've had many of those, but this one, this last one, just this, this has happened like, you know, not even a week and a half ago. So kind of a trip, but I know everyone has it and, and you're having a soul recognition, connecting with a soul family. I, um, just as you were talking about that, it reminded me of um, in COVID, we did a big meditation on government <laughs> and all the powers that be. And one particular person um, in power who needed some help. (laughs) And so we did this big meditation. There was a community. It was all online and um, amazing. It was huge. Anyway, days after that, like three or four days after that, I kept meeting people and I'm not exaggerating. I had maybe, I don't know, 
I don't, I don't even know, it was like five, six, seven, eight people all go, oh, I've, I've met you before. I've met you before. We've met. I know you. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I've never met you in my life. But they were all, it was just part of the community and on an energetic level, they'd all come to be part of this meditation, this healing meditation mm-hmm. that we did for the collective in the state. And I, it was fascinating because, I, like, I literally had never met these people before in my life and they were they were adamant that they knew me. And I'm like, and it took me a couple of days to figure out, I'm like, why am I getting all of these people thinking that they know me? And it was because they they had shown up on that level, on that soul level to right. be part of right. calling. And so they just saw me like they knew my face. Yeah. But it was a soul recognition thing. They, they, they literally had never met me. Yeah, yeah. It's I thought it was fascinating. Good. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. It's amazing. Just goes yeah. to show like it was really, really strong evidence that it's yeah. we are more than just our body and we're here oh. operating on this planet more than just what we think in our physicality. Like mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. Cool. it's true. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and we've all got past lives, we've all got carryover, you know, and this is the time for people to start unraveling all the carryover. So even though we could have had, you know, thousands plus lifetimes, some people in the hundreds of lifetimes, whatever we're doing, whatever we're carrying over, now is the time to clear it, okay? The new paradigm is happening. With the new paradigm, it's it's drawing, pulling your subconscious up. So hang on to your hats, people, because whatever is not love is coming, to, coming up. It'll be rearing its head and it's coming from past. Bonnie, I have a question for you. So what are your thoughts on new souls and old souls? And <laughs> I hear people okay. talk about it all the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think well, there's a bit of a misconception around that concept, yeah, but I wanted to hear your thoughts. Yeah, there's not really new souls being born, if that makes sense. Okay, we got yeah. new, some <laughs> souls have not been to planet Earth or not very many lifetimes on planet Earth, but they're not birthing new beings. That's not what's happening, Okay. Way back when uh, the when the, um, like archangels came together. Now remember, things were happening way before, just like a couple thousand years ago. This whole devil thing, this whole Satan thing, this whole Christianity thing, you know, is all only a couple thousand years old. Prior to that, there were much more ancient um, religions and belief systems. But basically, when you know when Lucifer agreed to forget. There was a bunch of archangels that were all a part of that. A lot of people are, are actually emanations from archangels, for real, okay? And, and then also when we look back at, at existence itself, consciousness birthing souls. Now, some of those early uh, souls that were birthed at that time, those would be like ancient souls. We do have ancient souls on the planet, you know, like really, really old ancient souls. And... Again, we're not birthing new ones. These are just beings that have, you know, done different experiences. Sometimes they're at different levels of frequency. You know, like a lot of souls get hooked into their whole past, you know, their life experiences and go into their trauma dramas, the rejection pieces, the abandonment pieces, the not love pieces and not enough pieces. And we carry those. That's the masses. But not everybody's carrying those kinds of wounds. There are frequencies of souls that are a higher that that literally are a higher vibrational frequency and i don't mean that is better than it's just there's a you know like the soul the majority of the souls are carrying density okay so a lot of souls have dissolved their density and now they're living at a higher frequency so when they come in they're not carrying the same kind of baggage they're not carrying all this you know the past life trauma drama like if you take someone new like, you know, like someone that they call, like they might say, remember back in the day, I forget what it's called, the, the rainbow kid, the rainbow beans or whatever. And then there was, you know, they had many, violet, be- whatever. So they label them because now this is coming onto the planet. But again, you know, it's all part of the divine plan unfolding and it's still part of the souls that have been incarnating and existing in different time space, in different alternate realities, different universes, different galaxies. And, you know, I mean, when you think about it, there's massive amounts. So 
you know, it's hard for the brain to mind to comprehend, but look, if you look at our universe, okay, you can't even see our universe. You can barely see the milk, you can see the Milky Way. But when you when you back out and you keep backing out, when you see the Milky Way, it's this little tiny thing in a universe, okay? There's more than one universe. There's as many as the eye can see, universes. So our brain can't comprehend. So if we got many, many, many universes and galaxies and, you know, planet, whatever, I guarantee you, you know, people have been to many places in existence. They come here with a different knowledge, different wisdom, different vibrational frequency, different understandings, difference in awareness, all of that. So they're bringing seemingly new to planet Earth, but it is not new. Okay. How about you, Sarah? Is that how you see it? Yeah, definitely. I didn't see um, like new souls or older souls. And I think also to the concept of the age of the soul is very relevant to the depth of learning or how much learning they're taking on. So there are some souls who learn at a slower rate or they're just slower to learn the soul lessons. Whereas then there's others that, you know, that old soul concept the the very the wise and the mature souls even when they come in at a young age and you know they're this wise soul and it's like well I look at that being and I just think and I see the learning like the depths of learning that they've taken on so they're um, they lean into their lessons they're paying attention to the lessons and they're growing at what appears to be a faster rate but it's not necessarily it's just that they're actually paying attention to the lessons and they're growing whereas um yeah then there's other souls who are um not immature but um slower to learn the soul lessons of what they've chosen to come or incarnate through mm -hmm. um yeah so it's it's a perception of a young soul versus an old soul, but it's really just how they're showing up through the lessons and how much they're paying attention to the growth and leaning into the growth. Yeah. You know, for example, like people that get really shattered, okay? You've, you've met people, you know people that they're so shattered, they, um, you know, they're, they hold an energy frequency of victimization, um, incomp incapable, not worthy, um, can't receive, you know, it's like people trash them, whatever, people hurt them. You know, what happens is their soul gets, a, a human or being gets pretty shattered and that gets anchored in, but they never move through it. So they just keep bringing that shattered, broken energy forward. But it doesn't mean that they're either an old soul or a new soul. You know, it just means like what Sarah is saying, there we evolve just like anybody you go to school, you learn, you grow, expand. Not everybody t learns the same way. So you go to school for that and your brain can't, or you don't, can't learn it. So you seemingly are, you know, not, not uh, learning. And then you learn a different way and you evolve, you know what I mean? So everyone's unique and the, the things that you're carrying forward, you can still be carrying stuff from, you know, ancient times of your soul's incarnations. So again, the good news is, is with the new paradigm, it is, it is shattering and, and bringing forth everyone's, uh, you know, wounding, so to speak, or misperceptions or whatever doesn't allow us to just shine our light, whatever's in the way of that, even the ego, the false self, all of that now is being exposed and will be shattered and, you know, so that we can begin to really just shine the light and be who we really are, which are these divine beings, pure love and light in the very core. We're not greedy. We're not, you know, a tr we don't want it to cause atrocities. We're not torturers. We're none of those things, but we're all acting out because of all of our past lives, our experiences, and we get angry, we get hurt, and we hurt back. And it's like this dance has been going on too long, and now it's coming to an end. That's what this whole paradigm is about. We are ending the dances that we've been doing of poor me, torture, suffer, or I'll hurt you, you hurt me, you know, I'll kill you, you'll kill me. It's like enough, 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 enough. We're done. We're done. So new paradigm, shine light, exposing, revealing, move forward, say yes, and open your heart and show up. Yeah. And as you're talking then too, I... 
I a conversation that I have a lot with clients, and I think it comes from a space of fear more than anything, is when we have those interactions with others that are quite toxic or, you know, thing, aspects, soul connections that people really struggle with. And there's a fear there that they're going to incarnate again with this person <laughs> to do this experience again and they're just like the thought of that just <laughs> petrifies them. And, and I say, and so, you know, you've made an agreement with this being to come in and heal yourself coming up against this person. Mm-hmm. Their journey has got nothing to do with you. They're just coming in and, and fulfilling a role for you, for your own healing, for you to move through that. And if that person isn't or can't move through that healing process with you, that's that's the, their choice. But it doesn't mean to say that you have to incarnate with them again. You can still do your healing, work yeah. on you, yeah. learn as much as you can through that exchange. Mm-hmm. And let's say you completely heal that part of you in this lifetime. You heal the wounding that they hold, that they, the frequency that they hold for you then if they choose not to move through that or meet you on that path, that's fine. They can find a match in another mm-hmm. lifetime another that way, will hold yeah. the for them. And you do you. You can move through it. You can actually, you, and, I, and I've said this before too, like I'm, I'm not doing this with you again. This is <laughs> coming to a close in this lifetime. Yeah. So I work on it for me to heal those aspects within me so that I don't have to sign up with that being again or yeah, yeah. go through those lessons like because yeah. I've, I've done it. I've done it on my end. That's all I'm responsible for. That's all I can control. So mm. then that person can either incarnate or do what they need to with someone else, but it doesn't have to be with you. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, mm. really the, it's really the soul evolving. It's about the soul knowing all facets of life to to merge back into the oneness okay so how do we do that direct experience yes we can be doing the soul dance with anybody someone could hurt us in the past we could try to work it out with them and unravel it there and hurt them whatever now we got karma now to go back and forth but we can it's still pain is pain loss is loss okay so it doesn't matter who you do the soul dance with just do the friggin' dance and be done with it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay enough, enough already exactly. <laughs> sir, you yeah. only have like five yeah. minutes left right uh yeah and then uh, yeah okay. we could talk about you could maybe talk a little bit about intuitive view at least and oh yeah is that okay <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah so um, yeah absolutely okay go ahead so in intuitive view um we have it's structured a little bit differently it's not like foundations in foundations we have a whole segment on past lives um, and how to clear past lives as well. Whereas in Intuitive You, we are exploring some of our past lives to clear any trauma, fear, all of the things that we've experienced where we've shut down our natural abilities, our psychic abilities, our intuition, trusting ourselves. Um, we clear that through those past life experiences. Every class has a huge clearing um, but a big part of it is because I see it, gosh, in in any psychic development course that I've ever done, but also um, in just general clearings, the fear that people have around their power and their intuition and seeing, as much as people say, oh, I, I want to see, I want to see, they're petrified of it, and they're and they're petrified of their power, and that's what our intuition is power. So there is a huge component of clearing the fear, clearing the trauma, clearing all of those things that we have piled on ourselves to shut those parts of us down, opening that up so that we have more access to ourselves, more access to our power, learning to sense, feel, see, perceive energy internally and externally um, so that we can start engaging and expanding ourselves on that level Mm -hmm. to become more of our true selves, um, and you, learning how to utilize these skills on a daily basis to just enhance everyday life. Um, but yeah, big a, a big part of that is the damage that's been done through past life um, incarnations and experiences where it hasn't gone so well, <laughs> which is <laughs> pretty much everybody. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It hasn't gone so well. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
So we're clearing a lot of that up. We're clearing up a lot of damage that's been done from past life experiences to enhance and open and activate those natural parts of ourselves to mm. become more us and more powerful and more amazing. But you're also helping people to awaken their uh, natural abilities, meaning whether you're clairvoyant, clairaudient, yeah. clairsentient, all yeah. of that. So you're also yeah. opening those things up for people. Yeah, out. definitely. And we all have several, like, it's not like we just have one. We have, we have all of them actually, but then there will be uh, one or two, maybe three that are more dominant or it's like, you, you know, when you're looking at your physical body, for me personally, my legs are stronger than my arms. <laughs> I've always had good legs, <laughs> good muscles in my legs, not, but not so great with the upper body strength. It's a bit like that. It's like, you know, you, you might be really strong in seeing, um, but your hearing isn't as strong. It's still there, so we absolutely will tap into that, but it's learning where your strengths are mm -hmm. and, and fine-tuning that and also exploring the areas where it isn't maybe a natural or instinctive um, uh, skill that you want to develop as well. So mm -hmm. that's really cool too. Yeah, yeah so fun we, stuff. I, I remember... Um, taking psychic classes way back and then I also taught many many years of psychic classes and it's just a fun thing because you get people that have thinking they're not they don't have any intuition or intuitive abilities and they they get surprised and shocked and excited because wow they could feel that or see that or sense that or saw that or whatever and it's like wow it's so cool very cool all right thank you sir I know you have to get going right now uh, but thank you for joining us and sharing all that Thanks amazing information. Me. Everything that Sarah mentioned, um, we actually have more. We actually have more information uh, in the link below. There's a free gift where you'll actually be able to find out what your uh, strongest um, psychic ability is, your strongest clear. And there is a clearing um, to access your more of your inner power. So there, everything that she mentioned is relevant to that link. You you definitely want to sign up and get the free gifts. And of course, if you want, sign up for Intuitive You starting February. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you, Bonnie. Thank you, yeah. Sarah, again. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>